Hey, welcome to the next devlog of our game, Quiet On Set. We are trying to make a no compromise story game set in the golden age of Hollywood. In order for us to finish and release this game, we've got to make it all the way to the top of this mountain here. And we're all the way down here. And in order to take the necessary steps up this mountain, we've got to focus on this current step, which is experimenting with the art style for our game. We kind of have like two goals with this art style that we've been thinking about. The first goal is it needs to be unique. And then the other goal is to make it easy to do because the game we're making is a very large world. There's gonna be thousands of objects. And one of the things that we're kind of pulling from our experience from our previous game is the amount of time we spent creating assets was huge. I'd say more than half of the time spent creating like this pot would be texturing. So we'd have to create the actual albedo texture, we'd have to create the normal map, we'd have to create the metallic map, we'd have to unwrap the object and make sure that the UVs were correct and everything. So that just took up an enormous amount of time. So the idea with this art style and how to pull it off is we want to be able to take models that the Dano creates and we want a simple way of applying this painterly brush stroke art style to these models like quickly with very little intervention from us. So what we did is um, Daniel sat down and made a kind of a 3D concept piece of the camera where it kind of shows what his vision would be for the object. So he hand painted it in Blender. It's like, okay, hey, this is what we kind of want the final result of the auto-generated object to look like. And we use this as a reference when we were developing the tools in Houdini and the shaders in Unreal. So the way that we're kind of talking about it here and brainstorming is we want to be able to use the vertex colors on the object to then feed into a shader that blends between different pre-made brush strokes. So, so Daniel will go into Photoshop. He'll create a series of different types of brush strokes, you know, like a vertical one, maybe like a swirly one, like a messy one, um, just a whole bunch of different variations of brush strokes. And then in the shader that we have in Unreal, we will use the vertex colors from the object and we'll use those as basically cues to interpolate or blend between these different types of brush strokes. It's the same principle as what all video games do with yeah. vertex painting the ground. You want it to fade from a gravel road to a grassy area. It's a very common thing in video games to take advantage of the RGB mm. channels to blend different textures together. We're taking that traditional approach and we're automating it. Through Houdini, uh, we're finding the concave shapes of the object and we're finding the convex shapes, so like valleys and crevices of objects and peaks of objects and we're applying a color to those and then we're also just giving uh, you know, in specific vertex channels, so like maybe the blue channel and the alpha channel, <clears throat> and then in the red and green channel, we can add some variation to the object. So we can randomly pick areas on the object and say, oh, let's do a little splash of red here and a little splash of green, and then once that goes into Unreal, those will be pulled out and blended with the texture. So here's the texture that, that Dano created, and this is just a series of RGB brushy kind of shenanigans. This transfers that texture into vertex colors on the object. And then, it's really that simple. In Unreal, all we're doing is we are interpolating between these three textures with the RGB colors from the vertices. And then that's just being output as the base color of this um, shader. So if we slap that on the chair over here, you will notice we get all this cool stuff. So then what I'm thinking is this is a red vertice. Yeah. And then this is blue, this is blue, this is blue. I think they're all blue. What we're doing here is we're figuring out how we can do more specific kinds of things. Because with this art style, we want to be able to have, you know, 95% of the objects are like auto-generated, the shading of the object. But for certain cases like leaves, 
you know, it's really specific how a leaf looks. What we want to be able to do is have it so that Daniel in Blender, he can vertex paint an object really specific like this leaf. And then in Unreal, it will work the exact same way as the auto vertex colored objects because it's just the vertex color on the object. So we can have a lot of specificity in addition to the auto generated stuff. So let me show you the objects. Look how cool this is. So all of these objects, we did not create the textures and these materials by hand. It was all generated. So I will show you. Kablam! So this is how we are texturing these objects. This is revealing what the vertex colors of these meshes look like. So what we can do here is we can take an object after Daniel models it and it can go from modeling to being completely textured and usable in the game within minutes. So something kind of cool is all of these objects are actually using the exact same material, just with different color variations. We've changed like the color that, that defines the concave shape. Like this one has red accents. So we can have these different variations kind of for free. All these cameras, these again are using the same method. Like this is actually using the potted plant material. And you'll notice it still has the, the same texture features as um, this metal one over here. So you can see the line here. Here is like an ambient occlusion kind of thing going on there, which is the same with um, the metal camera. So one of the reasons why we can do this is because of Unreal and Nanite. Because in order to have this level of detail with vertex colors, you have to have vertices and a lot of vertices. So traditionally, this would be a lot of polygons for a light post that you could define easily with just eight sides and you would just define it with a texture and a normal map. But that goes into what we were saying earlier where that's just a lot of work. So with Nanite, because it is able to reduce the polygon count of an object for free and do it so well and so seamlessly, we can have these high poly objects. And here is just something kind of silly. I wanted to see really, really big high poly models in Unreal just to kind of see what it would do. And it worked fine. These are like 2 million poly quads of just like bricks. And there's like four of them. Nanite and Unreal have no problem with it whatsoever. I was able to zoom around and you couldn't even really tell that uh, there were that many polys, which is kind of crazy. You'll notice as I zoom in and out here, it's automatically changing and reducing the polygon count. So as you can see here, this vertex um, colors are almost just kind of smeared now. But from viewing it, you don't really notice as I'm zooming out there, you can't really tell. So that's one of the benefits of using Unreal and using Nanite. You can have these relatively high poly objects with um, the vertex colors and that, that's what allows us to do this. So we're really excited about this because uh, we feel like we've created a very helpful tool for us to just bust out a bunch of really good looking art. We're trying to take advantage of the tech that Unreal provides and make it look like this game was made by 50 people. Um, and with these types of techniques and pipelines, hopefully we can do that. And we're just really happy with this art style. It just looks really cool to us, and hopefully we can make the entire game meet this level of quality. So if you watched our previous episode, you know that we're currently working on making a vertical slice for the game. And in order for us to do that, we wanted to make sure that we had the art style locked down. Now that we've proven that the art style works, we want to get one of the areas that we're using in the vertical slice and completely kit it out with the art using this new workflow. So we're really excited. Next episode, you guys are gonna see something freaking amazing. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like and share with your grandmother. See you She'll later. love it.